Welcome to Lesson 2-2, Rational vs. Irrational Numbers. Today we're going to talk about how to identify rational numbers, compare rational numbers, order rational numbers, and we're also going to talk about how to identify irrational numbers. All right. So first, in order to be able to identify these things, we need to know what they are. So here we have our vocabulary terms. And rational numbers. Rational numbers are real numbers that can be written as a simple fraction, one that turns into a decimal and either repeats or terminates. So a lot of times when you look at rational numbers, it's going to give you this explanation that it can be turned into a fraction or it turned into a ratio and what it all boils down to is does it go on forever or does it end? If it goes on forever and it repeats, it's rational. If it goes on forever and ever and ever and does not repeat, it's irrational. If it terminates, it's rational. So basically all you're looking for when you're looking at irrational numbers is, is this number going to go on forever and ever and ever and ever and never repeat? So some examples of rational numbers would be like one-third, square root of four, which we know is two, negative 12, negative 5, 6. So even though one-third is zero and three-tenths repeating and that three goes on forever, since it repeats, it is a rational number. Irrational numbers have decimals that go on forever but don't repeat. Okay, so examples of irrational numbers would be like the square root of 2. We talked about this briefly with our perfect squares. If it's a square root of not a perfect square, then it's an irrational number. It's going to go on forever. And pi, pi we know goes on forever, so pi is actually an irrational number. All right, so there is a video on rational and irrational numbers from Brain Pop that I would encourage you guys to go and watch. And it gives you the definitions and talks about what an irrational and irrational number are. So when you have the time, go to Brain Pop and type in rational and irrational numbers. And this is a good resource for you to help you differentiate between the two. For now, though, we are going to classify our numbers as rational or irrational just based on the definitions that we have. So we have 10. 10 has no decimal. So it's a whole number, so it terminates, so it's a rational number. Three-fourths. Well, three-fourths as a decimal I know is 75 hundredths. This terminates, so it's a rational number. Here I have 0 decimal 78563432 and I have no repeating sign, but I see that it goes on forever. Since there's no repeating symbol, so since there's nothing over to 7 to say that this whole thing repeats, we know that it goes on forever with no pattern and no repeating, so this is an irrational number. Here I have 0 decimal 52, 52, 52, 52, 52. Well, once this pattern is established, even if you don't have the repeating sign above it, we know that the next number has to be 5 because based on the division, once I get 2 as a remainder and bring down the next 0, my next quotient is going to be 5. And then when I subtract and bring down the, uh, bring down the 0, it's going to be 2. So it's, it has to keep going like this. And since it does repeat, it's a rational number. And negative 78. Even though it's a negative, as long as it's an integer, it's a rational number. So to kind of give you a little bit of an idea to make it really easy, if it's a whole number 
or an integer, they don't have fractions or decimals. So it automatically has to be a part of the rational circle. Right? So it's really easy. If you look at it and go, ooh, whole number, ooh, integer, you know automatically that they are rational. All right, so now we're going to compare rational numbers. So here I have negative 3 and 3 tenths, and here I have negative 3 and 3 tenths repeating. So I have to think, when I have a negative number, the further away it gets from 0, the smaller it is. So if I ignore the signs, and I look at 3 and 3 tenths, and I compare it to 3 and 3 repeating, I'm just going to go a couple places out. Well, since this is a 0, we would say that this number is larger. But since they're negatives, it's actually the 3 and 3 tenths that's larger, because 3 and 3 tenths is closer to 0. So in negative world, that's a good thing to be closer to 0. All right, here I have 75 hundredths, and I have 3 fifths. I can do one of two things. I can change this to a fraction, but as a fraction, it becomes 3 fourths, which for some of us might not be that helpful considering the fact that this is 3 fifths. I'm going to do it that way, and I'm going to turn this into a decimal just so you get some experience with both. So 3 fourths, this is bigger than half, and it's bigger than half by quite a bit. And we know that the bigger the denominator, the smaller the piece. So the bigger the denominator, the smaller the pieces are. Like we said with our pizza, as you keep cutting it into more and more pieces, the pieces get smaller and smaller and smaller. So here, 4 is, small, is smaller than 5, so 4 has the bigger pieces. So what's going to be bigger, having 3 larger pieces or having 3 smaller pieces? In this case, we know that 3 fourths, or 75 hundredths, I'm sorry, is going to be larger because 3 fourths is larger than 3 fifths. The other way that we can do this is we can turn it into a decimal which I know that I multiply both of them by 2, and this gives me 6 tenths, and 6 tenths is definitely smaller than 75 hundredths. All right, so moving down here, I have 0 and 45 hundredths repeating, and I have 4 and a half. Well, this is 0, and this has an actual whole group in it. It's 4 and a half, so I know the 4 and a half has to be larger. Don't forget to look at those simple pieces that help us out. Here, I know that 5 over 1 is actually 5. And 5, well, pretty much anywhere, 5 is equal to 5. Again, the hardest ones are going to be your negatives because it's such a weird thing to wrap your mind around. The further away it is from 0, the smaller it is. Because for so often and for so long, we've been been told the further away from zero the bigger it is. But remember with negatives you're in opposite world and things are not always what they seem. All right so you're going to go ahead and try and you're going to identify these numbers as rational, irrational, whole numbers, or integers. Now each of them can be part of the same category. So like we said before all whole numbers and integers are also rational numbers. So if you have an integer, you know that it also should be rational. And it might also be a whole number. So you're giving me all the categories that it could be in. So I'm just going to put here, list all categories. And you can use the short here. Now remember, it's IR for irrational and I for integer. Then what you're going to do is you're going to list the inequality symbol that makes this sentence true. So the square root of 16 and negative 5. Remember your inequality symbols? Less than, 
greater than, less than or equal to, greater than or equal to, or equals. As always, if you have any questions, make sure to write them down or email me. Make sure you take your time with this, and we can always go over it in class.